Hello and uh, welcome to Wiltshire Library's Poetry Tea and Chat podcast. I'm Peter from Wiltshire Mobile Libraries and in this episode uh, we have a summer theme as it's a hot and somewhat muggy July day outside the poetry cave that I am broadcasting from today. Never too hot for me to have a cup of tea on the go though, a strong English, English breakfast tea today. I hope you've got something refreshing to hand while I read a selection of summary poems and writing. Before I read the first poem today, I wanted to talk to you about something that may interest um, anyone who watches this poetry podcast, and that is shared reading. Uh, some of you may have noticed that we described this podcast as a reading friends activity and wondered what that means. Reading Friends is a campaign to promote talking about and sharing reading in libraries. In this podcast, myself and my colleagues hope you'll enjoy listening to the poems and writing that we read out and share with you. However, if you feel inspired to take this further, you might like to attend one of the shared reading groups that meet in Wiltshire Libraries. Shared reading groups don't set a required reading in advance, so there's no need to read anything um, like a novel or something that a normal reading group, a standard reading group might read. You can just turn up without having read anything in advance at all. When you turn up, the group leader will have chosen some writing for you to look at during that session, usually a poem or short story, something that you can read within that, that session quite quickly. And then the group leader reads the chosen piece aloud, and if participants want to, you can read aloud too. Uh, everyone, But everyone is encouraged to discuss how the writing makes them feel, and there's no expectation that you'll know anything about the writing in advance. If you've never taken part in shared reading, it is quite difficult to describe um, how it works. That you're basically diving into a poem and exploring the language with a friendly group, and it can be incredibly uplifting. Um, and be good for mental health and well-being. The best thing to find out how it works and whether or not you might like it is to go along to a group and experience what it's like. There are shared reading groups currently meeting in the libraries in Salisbury, Carn Library, Trowbridge and a recently relaunched group in Royal Wooden Bassett Library that's particularly looking for new members. So if you want to find out more contact one of the four libraries I mentioned that's Salisbury, Khan, Trowbridge or Royal Wooden Bassett libraries uh, or email libraryinquiries at wiltshire.gov.uk for further details. Shared, in, shared reading groups are free to attend and all participants get a cup of tea. So what's not, what's not to like, I was going to say. Obviously I need more tea. Um, so the first poem I was going to read is called Summer Rain by Hartley Coleridge. Thick lay the dust, uncomfortably white, in glaring mimicry of Arab sands. The woods and mountains slept in hazy light. The meadows looked athirst and tawny tanned. The little rills had left their channels bare, with scarce a pool to witness what they were, and the shrunk river gleamed mid oozy stones that stared like any famished giant's bones. Sudden the hills grew black and hot as stove the air beneath. It was a toil to be. There was a growling as of angry Jove provoked by Juno's prying jealousy. A flash, a crash. The firmament was split and down it came in drops the smallest fit to drown a bee in foxglove bell concealed. Joy filled the brook and comfort cheered the field. That was Summer Rain by Hartley Coleridge. Uh, I think that's a really good description of a summer wheat field uh, in the kind of weather that we've got outside today where it just seems at any moment there could be a sudden explosion of thunder and lightning and a summer rainfall. Uh, I love the description of the the sort of uh, watery pools that have dried up to scarcely uh, any water inside them, exposing uh, the oozy stones gleaming like famished giant's bones. What a great image. Right, the next poem I was going to read is also about wheat field in summer. And it's called The Wheatfield in Summer 
From the Farmer's Boy by Robert Bloomfield. Um, this is inspired um, by some of the wheat fields around me where I live and the walks that I've been taking recently um, with my dog um, and it's always just an incredible sight to see a ripening wheat field um, in some of the really hot summer weather that we've had lately. So this is The Wheat Field in Summer by Robert Bloomfield. Shot up from the broad rank blades that droop below the nodding wheat ear forms a graceful bow, with milky kernels starting full weighed down, ere yet the sun hath tinged its head with brown. There thousands in a flock for ever gay, loud chirping sparrows welcome on the day. And from the mazes of the leafy thorn, drop one by one upon the bending corn. Giles with a pole assails their close retreats, and round the grass-grown dewy border beats. On either side completely overspread, here branches bend, there corn o'ertops his head. Green covert hail, for through the varying year, no hours so sweet, no scene to him so dear. Stretched on the turf he lies, a peopled bed, where swarming insects creep around his head. A small dust-coloured beetle climbs with pain over the smooth plantain leaf, a spacious plain. Thence, higher still, by countless steps conveyed, he gains the summit of a shivering blade, and flirts his filmy wings and looks around, exulting in his distance from the ground, the tender speckled moth here dancing seen, the vaulting grasshopper of glossy green and all prolific summer's sporting train, their little lives by various powers sustain. I think Giles, with the pole, assailing the close retreats must be the farmer's boy. Um, anyway, he doesn't seem to take his work too seriously about uh, beating the grassy surrounds of the field and stirring up the sparrows. There are some sparrows in the wheat fields that I've been walking through with my dog, um, thankfully. Um, doesn't seem to be quite as many, perhaps, as there once were, but I certainly recognise that image of the sparrows loud chirping, welcoming the day, and dropping down onto the, uh, onto the wheat field. And I thought, for my next poem, inspired by the fact that it's not particularly summery, but it makes me think of summer walks with my dog. I would read a poem called The Hairy Dog, which my dog certainly is. He's called Hobbs, and he looks very much like Sprocket from Fraggle Rock, if you remember watching that TV programme. So this is The Hairy Dog by Herbert Asquith. My dog's so furry, I've not seen his face for years and years. His eyes are buried out of sight, I only guess his ears. When people ask me for his breed, I do not know or care. He has the beauty of them all, hidden beneath his hair. That was The Hairy Dog by Herbert Asquith. One of my favourite little poems, that one. The other thing that, uh, in terms of birds, that appear in the cornfields where I go walking, as well as flocks of sparrows, are larks, skylarks. We've still got some skylarks around where I live uh, and I'm always really pleased to hear them singing as they rise up into the sky. Something that's incredibly uplifting. Um, so this is the poem The Lark Ascending by George Meredith. He rises and begins to round. He drops the silver chain of sound, of many links without a break, in chirrup, whistle, slur and shake, all intervolved and spreading wide, like water dimples down a tide, where ripple ripple over curls and eddy into eddy whirls. A press of hurried notes that run, so fleet they scarce are more than one, yet changingly the trills repeat and linger ringing while they fleet, sweet to the quick of the ear and dear, 
to her beyond the handmade ear, who sits beside our inner springs, too often dry for this he brings, which seems the very jet of earth at sight of sun her music's mirth, as up he winds the spiral stair, a song of light and pierces air, with fountain ardour, fountain play, to reach the shining tops of day, and drink in everything discerned, an ecstasy to music turned. Impelled by what his happy bill disperses, drinking, showering still, unthinking save that he may give his voice the outlet there to live renewed in endless notes of glee so thirsty of his voice is he for all to hear and all to know that he is joy awake aglow the tumult of the heart to hear through pureness filtered crystal clear and know the pleasure sprinkled bright by simple singing of delight Shrill, irreflective, unrestrained, Wrapped, ringing, on the jet sustained. Without a break, without a fall, Sweet, silvery, sheer lyrical, Perennial, quavering up the chord, Like myriad dews of sunny sward, That trembling into fullness shine, And sparkle, dropping argentine. I love the rhythm of that poem. It really reflects a lark as it flies up into the air singing its trilling song um, and the language and the rhythm of the of the words seems to reflect that and i love some of the descriptions um, particularly at the beginning there where it uses the imagery of water to describe the flowing song like water dimples down a tide where ripple ripple over curls and eddy into eddy whirls really love that that was the lark ascending um, by George Meredith. So, um, as well as walking through cornfields, um, many of us that are out walking our dogs or just walking in the countryside um, may like to uh, walk in a bit of shade in the woods. Uh, and I know that, again, when I've been out walking in the woods, one of the things that I've been seeing a lot of recently is deer. It's been a big upsurge in the deer population of the UK um, and I saw a fallow deer the other day um, and uh, then I came across this poem um, called Deer all about a fallow deer uh, in a wood in summer so I thought I would read it now this is Deer by John Drinkwater shy in their herding dwell the fallow deer they are spirits of wild sense nobody near comes upon their pastures. There a life they live, of sufficient beauty, phantom, fugitive, treading as in jungles free leopards do, printless as eve light, instant as dew. The great kine are patient, and homecoming sheep know our bidding. The fallow deer keep delicate and far their counsels wild never to be folded reconciled to the spoiling hand as the poor flocks are lightfoot and swift and unfamiliar these you may not hinder unconfined beautiful flocks of the mind that was dear by john drinkwater and i love that last line beautiful flocks of the mind flex back a bit on what I was saying about shared reading and how poetry can be a balm to any kind of um, mental well-being and concerns that you might have. Um, it's well documented that um, any kind of reading, but particularly um, reading of poetry, um, has a very positive and uplifting effect on people's mental well-being. Uh, I think we've all gone through some trying times over the last couple of years um, and uh, reading poetry or um, any kind of reading for pleasure can be a, a great boon to us in these times. So um, I've got another poem now um, about, I've kind of themed this around an imaginary summer's day. 
So we've woken up and we've taken the dog for a walk in the summer wheat fields um, and now we've gone down into the shady cool of some woods um, where we've seen the deer. We've got another one about woods in summertime. Um, this is called Among the Furs and it is by Eugene Lee Hamilton. And I thought this was another good one that we could do because it's got some amazing smells of fir woods. I love the smell of uh, fir woods in the summer because of uh, all of the smell of the oh, smell of the resin uh, rising up. But I have lost my bookmark and cannot find the poem I was going to read. Isn't that annoying? Ah, oh, here it is. Right, Among the Furs, this is by Eugene Lee Hamilton. And what a charm is in the rich hot scent of old fir forests heated by the sun, where drops of resin down the rough bark run and needle litter breathes its wonderment. The old fir forests heated by the sun, their thought shall linger like the lingering scent. Their beauty haunts us and a wonderment of moss, of fern, of cones, of rills that run. The needle litter breathes a wonderment. The crimson crans are sparkling in the sun. From tree to tree the scampering squirrels run. The hum of insects blends with heat and scent. The drops of resin down the rough bark run. And riper, ever riper, grows the scent. The eve has come to end the wonderment. And slowly up the tree trunk climbs the sun. That was Among the Furs by Eugene Lee Hamilton. Did you notice how uh, the poet repeats some of the language over and over through the different stanzas in that poem and it kind of builds that sense of the oppressive heat but also the rising wafts of the smell of the resin. Um, he used the same lines like uh, where drops of resin down the rough bark run appear several times and the needle litter breathes a wonderment. What a fantastic line that is. The needle litter breathes a wonderment. Really evokes that smell of pine that comes out of a pine forest. So we've gone through the cornfields and down into the into the woods and now in the last part of that poem it's getting darker as evening falls. Um, and we need to start thinking about what we're going to do in the evening on this summer's day, imaginary summer's day through poetry.